clothes you choose can say a lot about you. You might choose them for comfort, colour or style. What you wear can really make an impact. But have you ever thought about the impact your clothes have on the people involved in making them? And the planet for that matter. In this film, we're going to find out how cotton is grown and is transformed into the clothes we wear. My shirt has been in the making long before I bought it. It has had a whole other life that I don't know about, involving far off places, big machines, and lots and lots and lots of people. We'll be meeting the people behind it all, finding out what life is like for them. There are many stages in this process, and these link together in what is called the supply chain. Let's start at the beginning. Feel the fabric on your top. What's it made of? It could well be cotton, which is the most widely used natural fibre in the world today. Did you know that cotton is grown? It's a plant that, once matured, has a soft, fluffy, protective case known as a bowl and is grown by farmers across the world. A whopping 20 million tonnes of cotton is grown in a year. That's the equivalent weight of 20 million horses. So if cotton is in high demand, that must mean that cotton farmers have lots of work and have enough money to look after their families properly, right? Sadly, many cotton farmers in developing countries, including leading producers like India and China, live in hardship. We're going to Gujarat, the westernmost state in India and one of the main cotton producing states in the country to find out more. For the last 50 years, the prices of cotton have always been low. And more importantly, the, the cost of production has been going up year on year, which means most of the times cotton farmers are actually making a loss. So smallholder cotton farmers are caught between the value of their cotton becoming lower and the cost of growing it becoming higher. The impact of this is that they can't afford to pay for essentials for their families, like medicine when they're ill, school fees for their children, and even food. And it's not just the people that suffer. In an effort to increase their crops and therefore their income, farmers often use chemicals that are harmful to the environment. So life for cotton farmers can be extremely difficult. And we're still only at the very beginning of the journey. So how does raw cotton become a piece of clothing? And are the people who help make our clothes along the chain treated fairly? Let's see what happens next. Firstly, once the raw cotton is picked, it's taken for a process called ginning. Ginning removes the cotton seed from the cotton. The ginning process sends clouds of tiny cotton fibres into the air which can cause serious lung illnesses for those working in the factories if they do not wear protective masks. The working hours are long and the machines are large and can be unsafe if safety standards are not in place. Next, the remaining cotton, called lint, is pressed into large bales before it's sent to a textiles factory to be processed. The bales of cotton arrive at the spinning mill where the lint is cleaned it goes through several cleaning processes to ensure that it is the highest quality. Then, it's spun into yarn. It is spun and respun on large machines, and workers ensure that these machines are working properly. These machines create a lot of noise and dust. It gets to the point when the cotton resembles the fine thread that you might use for sewing. Next, it is woven and knitted into sheets of material and dyed. So now we have reams of fabric and you can start to see how this will become clothes. The final stage is known as cut, make, trim, which starts when the material is cut into pieces following a pattern. From the cutting processes, the pieces are formed, stored and sent to the production line. There are several processes involved in the line to make the pieces into final garments and then those finished products are checked, ironed and packed before dispatch. In each production line, 
We stitch between 600 and 800 garments per day if they are in a basic style. And there we have it. Lots and lots and lots of clothes. Seemingly endless lines of them. So a lot has happened before my shirt even arrived at a shop and was put on a hanger. 27 billion is spent on clothes in the UK each year. So you'd think the factory workers would earn enough to live well on, wouldn't you? And yet some do not earn enough in a month to pay for one of the garments that they're producing. Why is this happening? How could things have got to the point where cotton farmers and factory workers do not earn enough to live on? Everyone wants faster, cheaper fashion. This contributes to um, businesses or suppliers overbooking, cutting corners and squeezing the salaries that are paid to the factory workers. And often the cotton farmer is even forgotten. This is really bad for workers. More people working longer hours for low wages in unsafe conditions. This was shown all too clearly in 2013 when a large factory called Rana Plaza in Bangladesh collapsed, killing over a thousand textile workers. All of this is due to cutting corners and not ensuring factories are safe enough for the workers. So how can we make sure the clothes we buy do no harm to cotton farmers and factory workers and gives them a fair deal? This is the fair trademark and you may recognise it from being on different food products in the supermarket. As well as food, Fairtrade also supports cotton farmers and workers in the clothing supply chain. Fairtrade supports smallholder cotton farmers working together in cooperatives. Fairtrade ensures they get a fair price, so that even when the price or value for cotton drops in the global market, theirs will stay the same. This brings stability to the cotton farmers' incomes and ultimately benefits their families. So the fair trade cotton mark on your clothes means the people who grew the cotton are getting a fair price. And there's also the fair trade premium. Cotton farmers in the fair trade system also get a fair trade premium which is over and above the selling price. They decide as a cooperative to use these premiums to invest in their farms, to send their children to school and other community benefits. Babu Bai is a head teacher at a primary school who has seen how using the fair trade premium has helped his students. Initially, we had no access to water here. The nearest water supply was five kilometers away. We did not always have many students because of the lack of water. Now we have our water pump, students are able to have direct access to water as well as their parents. It has helped everyone, the school, the children and their families. Fair trade also makes sure the farmers and their families are protected in different ways. Cotton farmers and their workers have to ensure that they wear protective equipment. Also, they help you to prevent usage of toxic chemicals. We've seen how fair trade makes life better for cotton farmers. And something called the Fair Trade Textile Standard helps factory workers get a better deal too. But what is the Fair Trade Textile Standard? What this essentially means is that workers in the entire fair trade supply chains will be aware about their rights. They shall have uh, functional trade unions. Um, they will be working under safer conditions and working towards achieving a living wage. To meet with the Fair Trade Textile Standard, workers must be allowed to come together and present any problems to the people who manage them. If I have a problem, I take it to the committee and I resolve my problem. If my colleagues have issues within the company, they convey them to me. I take immediate steps to speak to the management to resolve the problem and we work happily. I'm very delighted to work for this company. The Fair Trade Textile Standard is making a difference for the lives of factory workers in countries around the world. But this is still a relatively new standard that big clothing brands have to buy into. And many more factory workers across the world need to have these kind of standards in their factories. Clothing brands need to see that consumers, people like you and I, want their clothes to be made fairly. 
Otherwise, they'll continue to make clothes as cheaply as possible. So what can we do to help the many cotton farmers and factory workers who aren't yet benefiting from fair trade support? It's really easy to lose touch with how much our clothes really cost to produce when retailers slash their prices and wow us with bargains. But what's the real cost of our obsession for cheap fashion? And how can we make sure a fair price is being paid to the people doing the hard work? You, me, all of us have a lot more power than we think in all of this. Retailers need to sell clothes. They need us to buy them. Which puts us in prime position to say what we will and will not put up with. By letting your favourite clothing shop or brand know that you want your clothes to have been made fairly, they'll start to sit up and take notice. Especially if loads of us do it. They may begin to think that being part of the fair trade textile standard is a good idea. And as well as that, we all check the labels for the size and price, don't we? Well, we can check for the fair trademark too. This means that that piece of clothing meets all of the standards and that the people involved in making your new favorite shirt got a fair deal for their hard work. So there's much to change for the people who make our clothes. We've seen that change is possible and can happen. And the change begins with you and me.